What's up, Snake fans? Dave Palumbo here from Muscle Serpents Daily, and we're gonna do a slightly different format today. You know, I've been going a little off uh, topic, so to speak, because I had a, a weekend edition this past weekend. Now, Monday morning, we're gonna be talking about boa breeding. So, you know, I'm gonna show you some stuff from the snake room, and I'm also gonna kind of talk to you from my studio here, because, you know, a lot of people have asked me to do a video on, on what's the best way to breed boas, and now that we're into October and the boa breeding season is kind of starting, I figured, I kind of give you some of my insights. Now, I'm certainly not the most ex most experienced boa breeder out there. Um, I don't know the most, but I've bred boas. <laughs> so the key is you can read all the books you want. Until you breed boas, you're not a boa breeder, right? So I've tried to make myself knowledgeable about the, the process, and then I went ahead and I've bred boas for the last you know four years and successfully. So I'd have to say I'm a boa breeder, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at it, you know. <laughs> I'm still learning the, all the tricks, and, and some of the tricks that you're gonna learn are that there are no tricks. It's just that the boas do what they want. You have to create the conditions and the environment for them, and then it's up to them to do the breeding. So don't ever take it personal. Don't think you're a bad breeder because you're not doing things uh, or getting results. Now, if you get no results and, you breed, and you're breeding a lot of boas, then obviously you're doing something wrong. But if you're setting up the parameters and the conditions that are necessary, and you're not getting maybe the success that you want, which we all want every bow we breed to, 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 to have babies, right? <laughs> that's, that's ultimately the call. You, put, you have five or six you know, females that you, you're breeding, you want all five or six of them to, to have uh, babies. Never happens. You know, very rarely do you have 100% results. That's why it's good to breed more than you really want, because you know, if you get 50 to 75%, success rate, I think that that's pretty good, you know, and, you know, that's reasonable. But, you know, who knows, the first year I bred boas, I, I had very good success. I think I bred six boas or five boas, and I got four of them that, that had babies. So, you never know, sometimes you get some beginner's luck, too. The, the key is setting up the parameters. Since we're into October, what I like to do now is I start dropping my temperatures. My ambient room temperatures are probably around 82 for the boas right now, maybe a little warmer in the baby boa room. But 82 is about, 81 to 82 is what it runs all year round. And they have a hot spot of 88, 80, you know, 88 to 89 degrees that if they want to sit on, like after they eat, to digest their food, that's fine. Also, during the summer and spring months, I keep the humidity very high. I run humidifiers in the room. Now, I have to do that in Florida, which people are like, Florida's so humid. Because I have to run air conditioning because it's too hot out. So I have to run air conditioning. Air conditioning sucks the moisture out of the air. And even though I have a humidist humidistat, which allows me to add humidity to the air with the air conditioning, it never, it's never enough. You really want to get your humidity over 60, 70, up, 70 degrees is ideal. I know people that run it up to like 90, you know, almost 100%. I'd love that, but I just, I cannot keep it that high, no matter what, when you run air conditioning. It just sucks the moisture out of the air, no matter how many humidifiers, no matter how wet you make the floor, it just doesn't, doesn't work. So what I do as we get to October is I stop, I, I still run the humidifiers, but I'm, I'm, now I'm cranking the air conditioning a little bit to keep the temperatures cooler, which is sucking more humidity. My, I'll see my humidity in the room go under 60 degrees, which is fine because in the winter months, that's really what these boas are experiencing anyway. And I drop the ambient room temperature little by little down to about 77 ultimately over the course. It takes me about a month to get it down to 77. I might drop it one degree every like, you know, week or something like that. Get it down to 77. But I, I keep my hot spots. Some people don't, they turn them down, or they do night drops, I don't. I feel that you're just looking for respiratory tract infections. I keep the hot spot, if the boa wants to lay on a hot spot, it will. What I found is most boas don't like hot spots. They only lay on the hot spots when they're eating. And during this period now, I'm, gonna, this, I'm done feeding, okay? So I just fed, we're into halfway through October, I'm gonna stop feeding now for the last two weeks in October and then they won't get any food for another eight weeks after that or two months. So I'm basically fasting them. That, that is a, a, a stimulus also for breeding. You know, we're looking for certain parameters that are gonna initiate the breeding process. Okay, so what I do is I don't feed for two months. So they, for the rest of October, November, December, they're not gonna get any food. I may mean, even go two weeks into January and then I'll start offering small meals. Once we get to November 1st, I'll start introducing males with the females as well. So. And what you'll find is, once again, these, these boas will not sit on the hot spot. They're going to stay in the cooler part of the, the room, the, the, the cage, and you're creating a gradient. The hot spot being the warmest, the other side being the coolest. And you'll even see them wrapping the water bowls to even cool themselves down even more because they know that that coolness is going to help develop the follicles, which are the, you know, in the ovaries, 
There are these follicles that start developing. Their eggs that almost get, start getting bigger. Okay, and as they get bigger, it's an, it, you know at this point now they're going to want to start breeding. And once these males start locking with the females, the great thing about snakes is that the sperm will live. So they might you know who knows how many locks you really need to get a pregnant female, but a lot of times these it could be the first lock that does it because. The sperm that is deposited into that oviduct that sits in that oviduct can live there for a long period of time. So you put your male and you leave it. If there's no activity, maybe after a week or two, you might want to take her out, him out for two days or so, put him back in. Sometimes I just leave him. And you know what the truth is? People take pictures of all the locks, they put them on their Facebook and Instagram. A lot of times I never even see a lock, okay? Unless you're looking all the time, you know, who knows? They're probably locking up at night when I'm sleeping. So don't get so worried if you don't see locks. If your male is over 18 months old and he's, and he's big enough and the female is, you know, three, four years or over, you know, even, even two and a half years on a big boa, you can do it. I mean, I, I recommend three years and up, but you can do it. You know, the maturity level of a female is definitely um, over two and a half years old. Over three and a half is, is preferred, but, you know, I've done boas at two and a half. Now, the males, they're not like bull pythons. Bull pythons, you get to breed at six months old. I've done it. You're not doing it with, with the boa. You might see locks, but they're not going to be viable. It seems like 18 months and up seems to be the right time frame of how old the male should be. And you want them to be decent size. You don't want them to be little worms. because They're going to have trouble locking these the females, especially the Columbians. Maybe the dwarf boa is not such a big deal. They can, you can keep those males a lot smaller. So... You put the males in with the females, and you leave them for, for two months. You know, you change your water, and you, you, if they poop or pee, which they're not going to do very much of because you're not feeding them, okay, which is great. You kind of get like a, a two, three-month break from, from massive, you know, feeding and cleaning. And let them do their thing. When the spring comes around, March 1st rolls around, start raising your temperatures again, back up to your ambient slowly, start feed, offering small, you know, meals. And a lot of times you'll notice... An ovulation. What is an ovulation? An ovulation is when you get a snake and the follicles that have developed in the ovaries start building up and ready to go into the oviduct. And they all conglomerate in this one big mass. And so you get a big football sized, you know, looking lump in the snake, even though the snake hasn't eaten. That's called an ovulation or a pre ovulation. It's getting ready to ovulate. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes these, these, these eggs or these follicles go into the oviduct you know, one at a time, and, and they don't build up in this big mass, and you don't see it. So don't, don't be so concerned about catching ovulations. Once in a blue moon, I see a huge ovulation. Ever, usually, I don't even notice it. Okay, but what happens is once these eggs enter the oviduct, they will get fertilized by whatever sperm is there. At that point, having a male in is not even, it's not relevant anymore. Although I keep them in anyway, just for good measure sometimes, you know, for another couple of weeks. It can't hurt, right? Once you notice that female laying on the hot spot all the time, that's when you know that that female is pregnant, okay? Now, the eggs may not be fertilized. I've had a female lay on the hot, on the hot spot, you know, deliver, and then they were all slugs, you know, infertile ova. So you don't know, but by and far, the female thinks that she's going to deliver something. She's on that hot spot, okay? That, to me, always validates that. Now, if you catch the ovulation, okay, and then you, you notate that she has a shed, usually two to three weeks after that, you mark that down. Usually 100 days from that post-ovulation shed, which is what we call it, she will have that litter, okay? So if you mark the date down, you're going to kind of know when it happens. Now, right before it happens, sometimes the females will shed it two to three weeks before it happens. Don't freak out and say, oh my God, the, 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 the litter's no good. That's what I thought initially. It happens. They shed sometimes out of nowhere. No one tells you that, but they do shed. Sometimes they don't. Now, right before they're about to, usually with a week when they're about to deliver, they could have what's called, they have usually this waxy stool. They have, they, they poop out this like waxy looking yucky stuff. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's usually a sign that they're going to probably deliver a litter within a week or so. Sometimes a couple babies come out. I had a female this year, three babies came out and they were beautiful. They were perfect. I'm like, there's no way there's no way that this big, huge female only is going to have three babies. I didn't realize it. Well, a week or two, I think it was a week or ten days later, the rest of them came out. So that's, that's something that might happen as well. So I t don't leave them in there. I took them out. Obviously, I put them in the incubator, um, thinking maybe they were premature, which is, I usually put my boa babies into the incubator anyway until they shed the first time. Keep them warm, stable temperature, humid. And then 
I waited for the rest of it, and then when I got the rest of them, I put, took the rest of them out. So it's not a big process, it's not hard, but it, you have to follow these general rules, and if you do that, and you set up these parameters and these conditions that are conducive to these boas breeding, they'll do it. Now, whether they have babies or not, or it's successful or not, you cannot control, don't put your ego into it, don't say I'm a bad breeder, don't think you're an idiot. We all think that, we all think, oh, I'm the worst, I must be doing things wrong. That's the process. Do the process over and over again, you'll get results, I guarantee it. Be patient. Sometimes these females are too young, the males are too young, it happens. Sometimes they just don't wanna go. It's on their time, not your time. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed today's little tutorial on how to breed boas. Hopefully you could take some of this information and use it in your own trials and uh, you know, hit us up. If you have questions in the thread here, you could always contact me anytime you want on Palumbo's Pythons and Boas, Instagram or my uh, Facebook page. You can contact me directly at my email in the description and I'm happy to answer any questions if I, if I can answer them. Sometimes I have to look things up and ask other people what the answers are. That's how we all learn. All right, guys, I hope you're enjoying all these educational videos that we're doing. If you do, make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications, hit that like button. See you back tomorrow morning.